Hello everybody, thank you for looking in. In this little film, I'm going to go through the seated version of the movement Part in the Wild Horse's Mane. This is originally a movement adapted from the Tai Chi forms that we practice and further adapted into a chair-based exercise. There's a separate film for the standing version of, of this. As always, when we adapt to a chair-based exercise, the patterns change slightly, but the principles remain the same. So, do this in the chair. You can mirror my movements, find a comfortable chair, make sure if you need it, you've got support for your back. And as always, take care, take, take your time to, just absorb the details, don't worry about the flow of the movement, that will come in time. So to start off with, just transferring your weight forwards and backwards, this rocking movement that we used in the sessions for many of the movements. And at the moment you're going with 50% so on each side of your body, but we're going to change that by turning in the centre of your body, move the weight into one leg and then back and then into the other leg. Now the actual pattern that we use for part in the wild horse's mane is a little bit more complicated than, than this. But this is the basic pattern. So now at this point, bring your weight back, move over into your, uh, well, if you're moving to be your right side, I'm in my left hip. Now you go forwards into the opposite foot, so you take a diagonal line, you come back on the same line, you move the weight across, and you turn. I'm exaggerating these movements a little bit, especially the turn, so don't, you don't have to do it this big. And then you move into the opposite foot, and it's as though you're pushing against something with your shoulder, you come back, move across, and turn push in and when you pushed in turn again so you turn towards the foot and then you come back you move across and you turn again and you'll find if you practice these the transfer of your weight and the turning will flow more naturally push in as though you're pushing with your shoulder and then turn your body come back you'll probably feel your body turning a little bit and go across, turn, and go forwards, and back, and straight across to the opposite hip. So there's a number of different stages that we can identify here. And the turn, and then I can go forwards, one, turn, two, three I come back, four I move across and five I turn and so now I'm ready for the, the next movement, one move in, two I turn my body, three I come back, four I move across, five I turn. We can slim that down a little bit, one and then two and three come back into this hip and four go across and at the end of going across just let your body turn you'll find after a while it does that quite naturally so now it's four stages one two into this hip three move across and four I'm making quite big movements, so you'll see my body leaning from side to side a little bit. So actually something we want to try and avoid, but I want you to see the movements. I go forwards, one, I turn, two, three, and then four, move across, and turn. One more time, one, and two, and three, and four. Although I haven't numbered it at this point, I've taken it out the numbering system. Don't forget that little bit of a turn when you settle in. So at this point I'm looking a little bit to the towards the knee on that side. Now have your hands 
in front of you. And let's do that again. Just imagine you're carrying a tray of drinks in your hand. You go one and then two. Notice how that moves the hand. Three, coming back. And four, into the opposite hip and turn. And then one, going to do your pushing with your shoulder. And two, three, and in one, two, three, four. Remember that little turn at the end. Count it as five or four and a half if it helps. One, two, three, and four. And this time, one. And on two, just let that movement push your hand out so that your arm is more or less parallel to the top of your leg and your knee. Now leaving your hand at about shoulder height, three, you come back and here, turn your hands in to hold the ball and four, move across and remember there's that little turn at the end. So now onto the other side, one, pushing in with your shoulder and two, turn in, three, coming back, hold the ball, and four, move across. So one, move your weight in, and two, as you turn, push the top hand down to the hip directly beneath it. And it's like you're stretching out a piece of elastic. And three, let the hands come back together with the movement, hold the ball, four, little turn at the end. One, Top hand pushes straight down. Try not to make extra movements. Two is the turn. Three, we come back and you hold the ball. Four, we come through. So we quite often find ourselves wanting to make extra movements when we do this. Try not to do that. Keep the hand still for most of the time. So I'm here, my left hip. One and two. Notice how the movements start to blend. Three, four. One, two, three, and four. Part in the wild horse's mane. Nice and easy and gently. Don't rush the movement. If you get confused, just come back to the numbering and be patient with that. Once your body gets used to the pattern, it will flow much more freely. Remember the weight is moving forwards and backwards when we do the main movement. Here it goes from hip to hip, here from the hip, diagonally to the foot and back on the same line. The movement of your weight, the turning in the centre of your body, governing the movement of your arms, so that your hands move out too far. And if you're comfortable with this, and you a little bit of an extra challenge, we can add a, an extra part here, raise your knees, step forward a little bit with your foot. So now, go forwards and come back. Raise the toes, bring your foot in before you move across and turn. Step forward just a little bit, plant the foot onto the floor, into the floor, part in the wild horse's mane. So this is with the stepping if you wish to integrate that. If you find it too confusing with the stepping, then just watch. Watch the film again, go back to the basic movements and you'll find that you can gradually begin to Feed these little details in. Do one more with the step. And we're finished there. So just to remind you of the basic pattern, I start with my weight here in my left hip. On one, I go forwards into my right foot. On two, I turn the body. On three, I come back to the right hip, and on four, I move across, and there's just a little turn here. So I'm now, my, most of my weight is here. One, 
I go forwards into this leg, my left leg, two, I turn, three, I come back, four, I move across and turn. Now, holding my arms, got my left hand on top, my right hand underneath, one and two and on two, the hands move, the top hand pushes down, the bottom hand swings down. Three, coming back to hold the ball, four, moving across and turning while I'm holding the ball, and then one into my left leg, that's this one, two, I turn, pushing the top hand down in front of the hip, three, I come back and hold the ball, and four, I move. I hope this gives you a clearer idea of what's going on in that form. Thank you for watching.